next on HBO. Get ready for the funniest half hour in stand-up as some of the best comedians in the business take the stage. HBO Comedy Half Hour, Kathy Griffin. It's not TV, it's HBO. Next. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Fillmore Auditorium in beautiful San Francisco! Please welcome Kathy Griffin! San Francisco, thank you so much for being so nice. I'm very nervous, so if this doesn't go well, I'm just gonna start to strip and cry like Coco in Fame. <laughs> Trey Jolie, Coco, Trey Jolie. Okay, let's move on. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start out with a celebrity gossip story. You up for it? Yeah! yeah! So, guess what? I got to be on Seinfeld this year, and um, I wanted to walk you through it. So this is what happened. So I get to be on Seinfeld, which is a big, giant honor, because it's a wonderful show, and it's really exciting. So I go, and the first, the first day you have a table reading, right? We all sit around a table with the famous people, and then you read the script. And um, it's weird, because they're so famous, you know? And when you first meet Jerry Seinfeld, it's like you're meeting someone doing an impression of him, you know? <laughs> It's sort of jarring, you know, he goes, hey, how you doing? And you go, hey, hi, Jerry. Like, you start talking in those, you know, cadences and stuff. And uh, so I, I, I read the part, and I had a funny part, and I was sitting next to Michael Richards, Kramer, and then I, uh, we were reading it, and then they sort of laughed at the first thing I said, and then Michael Richards patted my back, and he goes, good job, Kathy. And I was like, oh, he's so sweet. And then he never knew who I was the rest of the week. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's just like that. He's exactly like Kramer. And um, so, okay, so anyway, then we do the table read, and here's the thing. It's... Um, um, all my scenes are with Jerry, which is really fun. And we started work on a Sunday. And it was the day of the Golden Globes. So I um, wanted to ask a favor of Jerry, which is I wanted to get an autograph from him because I was going to a Golden Globe party that my friend Dennis was having. And my friend Dennis is gay, and they have the best Golden Globe parties, and you know that's true. So anyway... Um, <laughs> Oh, sometimes I just, I just have to have my gaze around me. Okay, so anyway, then um, I, I, uh, I thought, okay, but you know, I've met a lot of celebrities, and I know that you shouldn't just immediately go up to them and go, like, I'm your biggest fan, because they get all flinchy and scared. So I thought, well, I'll wait to see, you know, get to know them a little bit and stuff. So we're rehearsing, rehearsing, and then um, I had, like, a, the pen and the paper ready, you know, like, guns blazing, just ready, very easy on Jerry. So we rehearsed our first scene, and then I took them both out, and I said, oh, um, Jerry, I have a favor to ask. And he goes like this. So I was like, okay. And then uh, he starts talking to the director. And I'm just standing there and standing there. And then he's talking. He's getting more and more agitated about the script. And he's going on and on about he doesn't like it and he wants to make changes. And he's getting more and more angry. And I'm standing there with the pen and the paper like, bad timing, bad timing, bad timing. And, um, but now it's too late because I'm there like a big weirdo with like a pen and a paper. And um, like I'm going to pass that off. Hey, I was just going to write a note to say, hi, how are you? No. And... Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so anyway, he turns to me and he goes, and you had a question, like that. And I go, uh, oh, yes, uh, Jerry, uh, glad to be on the show. <laughs> and um, I said, <laughs> I go, my friend Dennis is having a Golden Globe party tonight, and I thought it would be really great, since you're nominated for a Golden Globe, if you could write like a little, uh, like a little note to the party, like, you know, dear Dennis's party, vote for me, Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> and he goes, what? <laughs> and, I was dying. I was so, with the red, like a thermometer, boop, 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 fever. And so, um, so I just said, oh, you know, like, no. and then he's looking at me, he's like, what are you, and he goes, uh, I'm going to the Golden Globes, I'll just see you at the party. And I go, no, Jerry, some of us watch from private homes. <laughs> we, don't, <laughs> we don't all 
get to go. But, um, so anyway, then I explain it again. I said, yeah, like a little note to the party. And then he looks at me like I have antenna, like I'm a crazy alien. And uh, he just goes like this. That's about the last thing I have time for right now. You guys, I died. I just shit. So anyway, I go, um, and I, I just was like, okay. Because you know, it's like, okay, it's your show. And then um, he walked away. And then the script girl goes, he's cranky. So then... <laughs> So then he, said, he says to the crew, he says, okay, look, I'm going to the Golden Globes tonight, so I only want to work an hour. So everybody has to do their scenes after I'm done, and I'm only going to work for an hour, and then I'm going to leave. And, you know, it's big Puritan work ethic. And then uh, I just, <laughs> and then, like, the more, because, like, when you go in and you do, like, a little part on a show, it's, you know, it's kind of nerve-wracking and stuff. So the more I started thinking about Jerry Seinfeld, like, yelling at me and not signing, the, the more I started getting really angry. And then I was walking around all day. Well, it was only an hour-long day, but I was, like, walking around... <laughs> And then I was like walking around in my head just like an insane person going, you know what? Fuck you, Jerry Seinfeld. Man. Like you can't sign your fucking name. And I'm like getting really mad and I write, you know? So anyway, then, um, so then Jerry and I are in the fight. Except he doesn't know it and couldn't care less. So... <laughs> with Miss Thing. So anyway, um, so then um, actually an hour later, he was saying goodbye to everyone. They're saying, good luck, good luck. And I was like, hmm. And, uh, <laughs> and then he turns to me, he goes, and you, you wanted me to sign something? And then I was like, oh, um, yes. So then he signed it. And then of course it was the big hit of the Golden Globe party. So then, uh, but I was not through with Cherry. So the next, the next morning I go into work and um, I was really uppity and I was still in our big fight. And, uh, and then he was actually really, really nice the second day, and I, and I think he knew he, was, he had been an asshole, and so he walks in and he goes, um, oh, well, good morning, Kathy. And I was like, hmm, morning. And uh, he <laughs> like, he cares. And then he was going, like, we'd do a take, and he'd go, oh, you're very funny, Kathy. And I was like, hmm, well, not to you, I suppose, Mr. Famous. And then, um, and then, uh, so we were, like, still in a big fight, and then I was just thinking, oh, you think I'm just going to take you back, Jerry? Oh! And, uh... <laughs> with the, you and the child bride, that poor little girl running around with you. And uh, so, well, you know that's so wrong. Um, that's just fucked up. So, uh, and that's why I decided, woo, judge with the gavel, <laughs> guilty. So uh, anyway, then, <laughs> so anyway, then like the rest of the day, you know, by the end of the week, I actually end up sort of getting along with him. I think he's really great. Okay, that's the end of that story. There's no big ending. All right. Um, <laughs> oh my God, thank you. Jerry, thanks. You've been a real sport. I'm just kidding. Can you imagine? Oh, God. Anyway, um, so uh, I, I, uh, I have a, a lot of anger toward men, and I don't mean to, and I'm working on it, but I can't help it. Ugh. So one thing is, um, but I like them in many ways. Okay, so uh, there's one. There's one way. So uh, one thing is uh, I uh, went through this phase where I guess I was going through a bad phase with guys, you know, and I was getting sort of pessimistic about them, and I was thinking sometimes how it's, it's like too much trouble to get laid, you know, because you have to go out with a guy and to go to dinner with him and listen to him talk about his opinions and I don't have that kind of time. So, um, I, <laughs> I... I have a sexual agenda, and it's go, go, go. So anyway, um, so I was just thinking, I thought, you know, sometimes it's just too much work, and I should just get a male prostitute. So I started thinking about that, like, what would it really be like to be with a male prostitute? And in movies, they're portrayed as such, like, out-of-work troubled models, you know? Like, that's the only way they'd become a male prostitute. And they get just pictured Richard Gere, I was called Dick, Dick Gere. And, um, you know, an American gigolo being all pensive and everything, and I thought, that's what I want. I want an out-of-work troubled male model who's a prostitute. So um, I started getting this idea in my head, yeah, this is the thing to do. And um, I called my girlfriend Janine and I said guess what I'm gonna get a male prostitute and she said great I'm in <laughs> Which, <laughs> and the only thing that means is she's gonna live totally vicariously through me she's not gonna do anything but she's in so um so I said okay great so how do I find a male prostitute and it turns out we didn't even know one so I said you know what are we gonna do and then she said okay you have to look in the free weeklies you know the weekly magazines so I said perfect so I look it up and I say um, I can't find any there's no like heading for prostitutes and then she said no you have to look under massage <laughs> yeah thank you that's my girl, think it, 24-7. So um, I look, and, and it's all, it's all, but it's all um, women for hire for men. You know, it's really hard to find, like, a straight woman looking for a straight man to 
fuck her for money. <laughs> so it's really, if you want to bottom line it. So anyway, um, I said, <laughs> so then she goes, no, no, you have to look under sensual massage. <laughs> Yeah, baby. And um, I said, okay, well, you know, and I've only found two ads that looked like they were, you know, guys for me. So I, uh, I called up, oh, yeah, three-way calling, which is the best feature. Oh, love it. And so um, I had Janine on one line, and then I called the number, and this guy answers, and he goes, um, uh, hello, this is Philippe. I would like to give you a sensual massage, and I know I can make you feel good. Beep. So Janine and I both slammed the phone down, call each other back, and she goes, he's the one. And... Um, <laughs> what I love about that is that based on someone's outgoing message, you would decide whether or not they should come to your apartment and have sex with you. That's all the information I need. Got it. So, um, so then I, uh, I called my girlfriend Melanie and I said, um, I'm getting a male prostitute. She said, terrific. And everybody was into it. And I said, um, but you know, I know it's illegal. And what if my phone is bugged and I go to jail? Can you imagine if I'm, if I'm a John? And so, um, <laughs> And I go to, that's so weird. And I go to jail and they go like, come here, new fish. And then they beat me up and fuck me. So anyway, um, I don't know. You never know what's gonna happen in the big house. So uh, anyway then, so anyway she says, okay, this is what you do. When you get them on the phone, you have to say, you know, cause they all act like they're escorts. And you have to say to them, well, do you take tips? Code. So I go, Melanie, how, did you, how do you know this code? And she goes, oh, I saw it on Cops. <laughs> so I go, well, Mel, if you saw it on Cops, then I think that means the cops are hep to it. You know, and she's like, oh, oops. Okay, so anyway, then, so I called Janine back and I go, okay, Philippe is the one, what should I do? And she said, well, you've got to know what you're shopping for. And I do like to be a smart consumer. So then I started thinking about it. I thought, the more I thought about it, I thought, I don't know, do I really want to have a stranger come and like have intercourse and that was too scary? So I said, okay, I think I'm going to ask him to make out, spoon, and I get to be on the inside, and, which I love so much, and then manual stimulation. And then, and which I should be paying for all the time because I take like an hour and it's really tedious for the poor guy. And then I always, oh, the poor, oh, I take forever. It's so tick, tick, tick. And it's just, it takes a really long time. It takes a really long time. And I always am afraid the guy's gonna get carpal tunnel syndrome and you know, like I have a hand brace in my drawer at all times, you know, are you okay? Um, keep going, only 20 more minutes. So, oh, it's so ugly. So I just thought, oh, I should have been paying these poor guys all along. So, um, I, so and then Janine said one of the sweetest things, so the best friends. She goes, you know what, Kathy? You're so funny and charming. He'll probably fuck you for free. I know, isn't that sweet? So anyway, so now everybody's into it and stuff. And then I, uh, so I call Philippe up and I say to him, um, you know, so he calls me back, and now I'm flying solo because nobody else is on the other line. And he says, uh, yes, hello, it is Philippe, I got your message. And I said, uh, yes, Philippe, uh, hello, uh, my name is Kathy, and I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about your massage. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to really, ah, yeah, he's going to know what the lady wants. So anyway, he goes, um, he goes, oh, well, you know, I have worked in Europe, and I am, um, work on athletes all the time, and I'm an excellent masseuse. And I'm like, oh, fuck. He's a real masseuse? Like, I need that shit? I'm like, first of all, I don't like my feet touched ever. Secondly, oils would like scrub my sheets, and that's weird. And so I said, um, I had to come clean. So I go, um, Philippe, look, um, I'm gonna be honest with you. Did you ever see American Gigolo? <laughs> He's like, no. And I said, um, well, I, I don't mean to insult you in any way, but frankly, um, I was sort of looking for, you know, like a sexual massage. And then there's this pause, and he goes, you know, sometimes when I'm giving a massage, I am thinking I would like to touch the tender parts. <laughs> I love tender parts. Vagina is out, it's tender parts. Put that into your vernacular today. So I just love that tender parts. It's so nice, like a good pizza, like a good steak. And so, um, a good Bernays sauce. So anyway, I, I was like, really? So anyway, he says, well, you know, maybe I could do that. So now, I've basically talked him into becoming a prostitute. <laughs> and you know what's so great about that? I mean, let's face it. Everybody wants a prostitute, but you want them the first day on the job. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> so ideal, you know?
you know. And then he says, um, he says, and you know, I'm interested by this idea. And if you like, I could take you out for a drink. And maybe if you like me, I would be glad to give you a free massage. So I'm like, okay, now I just say 50 bucks. And then, uh, and he says, and then later, you know, we could do the other if you're interested. And I was so excited. So I said, okay, well, you know, may I call you back? And he said, oh, whatever you want. So I hung up and I called Janine. I told her the story. And then she goes, she said, my favorite thing. She goes, and that's how Kathy met her husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> wouldn't that be a charming story for the grandkids? So, um, so anyway, then I'm like all excited and stuff, but then the closer it gets to actually meeting Philippe, the more freaked out I get. And then I'm thinking about that story Melanie told me about cops. And she said, you know, I, so I said, tell me more about this cops thing with the prostitute and the John. And she was telling me this horrible story about this prostitute that, like, you know, was killed by this John and he stabbed her and he killed her. I was like, no, that could be me. And so then, like a week later, Philippe calls me in complete innocence. And he says, oh, yes, hello, Kathy, it is Philippe. I was wondering if you thought about what we talked about. And then I just panicked and I go, stay away from me, you whore. And I just slammed the phone down. <laughs> and, that, and that was it. I never talked to him again. So it was sort of like more fun to think about. Um, applause break. Okay, thank you so much. Um, okay, uh, I also, this is a story that I hope will garner sympathy and pity. I was, <laughs> I would like to tell you what you'll be feeling. I, uh, I was, I got dumped on New Year's Eve. Come on, that's lame. Oh, hold me. I love that so much. So anyway, uh, I got dumped on New Year's Eve, and this is so lame because um, I uh, was going out with this guy that I was really crazy about, and he did that thing where halfway through the relationship, he ripped the mask off and he changed personalities. And he was like, yeah, oh! I love the idea. Yes, thank you. I love that. And uh, he he like ripped it off, and he was like that final alien and aliens that like ah, scary one. And uh, <laughs> and which is like uh, freaky. And um, so it was such a bummer because I liked him so much in the beginning, and at the end he was so mean that I would just go why and freak. And so anyway, um, he dumped me on New Year's Eve, and that was harsh. And uh, uh, the thing that's so awful is when stuff gets back to you that the person who dumped you said about you through friends. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So anyway, <laughs> and I'm walking around trying to be all gracious, and really I just want to kill him, but I can't because I would go to jail. So, and you know how I'm afraid of that. So anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, uh, then I ran into someone, and I found out what he was saying about me. It was so evil because what he was saying was, he goes, you know, things just didn't work out with Kathy and me. I mean, she's a really great person, but um, we're just two really different people. <laughs> Which bummed me out because we were actually three different people. <laughs> There was me and the two of him. And I was like, oh, that's so wrong. So, um, uh, okay, I'm going to tell you somebody who bugs the shit, uh, the shit out of me, and I hope that you agree with me. You know who I just cannot take and I cannot stand? I cannot stand downtown Julie Brown. Be with me. Be with me. Please be with me. Okay, I find her so annoying because she's a big idiot. And I think she's very anti-woman, and I'll tell you why. I don't like that. Because, um, first of all, she's full of shit. She's lived here 15 years, and she's still, like, the, got the cockney, like, Oh, I've been naughty. I'm a naughty little girl. Oh, bullshit, honey. And, and you know, she's 40 years old, dressed like she's 13, and it's just embarrassing. And, and another thing, I just feel like when, you know, now she's, like, on that, e, that awful E show, and then I just think, can't she just join a road company of Oliver and just run around singing who will buy and shut the fuck up and so uh so anyway i saw her uh i saw her on this talk show and uh pushing nothing probably and anyway i saw her on this talk show and then um this kitty has claws ram <laughs> so so then the, the the talk show host made uh they made the talk show host made an oj joke and then julie brown turned to the woman and just went i thought the judge said he was not guilty <laughs> boom and the thing that gets me so And the thing that's so bad is like any woman who ever sticks up for OJ is no friend of mine and that's so fucked up. And like, well, no one should, but that's, no, I mean it, that's really wrong. That's really, really wrong. And you know it, and you know it's wrong and you know I'm right. I have so much anger and I do, and sometimes I just, I can't talk anymore because look, look at me. It's angry, it's angry, angry. I, and you know how people go like, oh, you know what, karma's gonna get him back. Well, that's not enough for me. Oh, you know what, he's, he's really, he's really, he's not happy. He's not, no, no, what goes wrong comes wrong. Fuck that. I would like him, I want him to be stabbed in front of a group of people who laugh. That's what I want. It's so wrong, it's so wrong. You know it's wrong. Uh, 
Um, but I'll, I'll try to get off that because I know too much. Anyway, uh, so, and then Julie Brown, I love her saying the judge said he was not guilty. Uh, what kind of government do you think we live in, idiot? Uh, we have something called a jury, which is faulty at best, but at least we have it. And it, like the judge said, hmm. Not guilty? Like, you just said it once. The judge said, oh, I'm naughty. Okay, fine. Um, oh, shit. All right. Um, uh, okay, I, um, oh, you know what happened? After I got uh, dumped on New Year's Eve, I was really, really depressed, and I started watching the uh, trash talk shows compulsively because they made me feel a little bit better about myself. Okay, my favorite is Springer. I'm so down with Jerry. I can't even stand it. It's all about Jerry. Okay, so I was watching the Springer one night, and you know the beautiful thing about Springer is there's always, the thing that makes it, you know, better and superior to the other shows, like say 60 Minutes, <laughs> no, is um, there's always like this reveal about 40 minutes into the show. So they'll start the show with one topic, and then it goes crazy and kooky, and then there'll be something even worse, at, like 40 minutes into it. So I was watching this one about May to September relationships, which I love as long as the woman is December. So I just love that so much. So it was about that, and they had you know the older women with the younger men, and they had this one couple. They were the they rocked so hard. The woman was named Patches, and the thing that was so great about that is no one ever acknowledged that she had the same name as a hobo's dog. So it was like, okay, Patches, hi. And then her husband was Matt. Then they, so they had Patches and Matt, and then they had their family. And it was so great, because her mom was a big, giant, fat woman, and she looked kind of like a drag queen, and you weren't really sure if she's like a man or a woman. She was big and fat and lots of makeup, and she had rose-colored glasses and stuff. And um, then the husband, this is so typical and perfect, the husband was a little spindly guy with a western suit and a polo tie. <laughs> So anyway, uh, I was, and then they had Patch's sister on, and she was great because she was clearly a biker chick, and she was um, wearing sort of a bad frilly dress that you know she bought in a panic, and it could barely hide her major tattoos. But for the Springer show, she's going to put on a pretty dress. So, um, <laughs> so they go on, and they're talking about you know the different relationship, you know the different the disparity in age, and then um, so that wasn't enough, you know, and the audience doesn't really like Patch's, and here's why: Patch's is completely drunk drunk out of her mind and she's got like this cheesy bouffant hairdo and she's just sitting there on the panel like this <laughs> smoking okay so anyway then we find out later in the show wait it gets better so then we find out later and, and the uh the mom is she's always yelling at jerry and she's using this voice every no matter what she says jerry what you don't know is patches is 43 years old and matt is 17 and i just like and then, um, and the audience goes apeshit. So, but then here's the reveal. And then, and then the mom goes, Jerry, what Patches hasn't said yet is she has full-blown AIDS. Ah! The audience goes crazy. We hate her. We hate her. And they hate her so much. And then here's the best part. Patches, I swear to God, this is her reaction. <laughs> I died. And that was so awesome. That she's like, and then, uh, and then the mom goes like this, and Jerry, the other thing she didn't say is that they have unprotected sex. Ah! Everyone goes crazy. Ah, we hate you, patches with torches. Patches must die. Patches must die. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, woo. so then, um, it's my bra. So anyway, then, um, so then, uh, 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 Patches goes like this. I swear to God. She goes, they have unprotected sex. And Patches goes like this. <laughs> okay, so then, Patches starts to say something. And you think, okay, here's Patches' big moment. And she goes like this. Jerry, what am I supposed to do? He comes into bed with me. Am I supposed to just roll over? I guess I have AIDS. But then he gets into bed with me, Jerry. And the audience is like this. <laughs> like she's totally incoherent, you know? So, okay, the audience, <laughs> the audience totally hates her. And then the mom goes like this, this is the best one. The mom goes, and Jerry, what you don't know is, <laughs> it's so much good. And I was like, okay. So she goes, uh, Jerry, what you don't know is that Matt is mentally deficient. No. <laughs> what? Not Matt, not my Matt. <laughs> Uh, then they end the show, but the show is in such an uproar that they devote the entire next night show to people who are mad at Patches. And so, <laughs> I would have flown in if I could. All right, that's it. That's that story.
I was just on a show called um, Saturday Night Special, and I was a regular on that, and it was um, produced by Roseanne, who, let me just say this about her, I love her. Okay, so anyway, it was, I do, I think she's great. I think she is really great. Um, but unfortunately, the show was canceled because um, it sucked and no one watched it. So that's a deadly combo. Anyway, um, one thing that was fun about the show is uh, it had musicians on, right? So I got to um, meet all these rockers and stuff, which is great. And I've decided that now I'm in the rock community. So hello. Anyway, um, uh, so uh, my job would be I would sort of be the liaison between the cast and the rockers, which means I would just tease them and they would never know who I was or like me. So I, um, one day we had Salt and Peppa. They came on and that was like fun to meet them. But the weird thing is their names. Are salt and pepper and it's just weird because they go like hi i'm you know peppa and you you're like hi i'm a uh, chandelier like you just make something up you know <laughs> hi because <laughs> you're just like kathy is like too pedestrian so anyway um but you know let me just say this about salt salt goes Hol hello i'm cheryl okay fyi anyway then um so they come on and i was like hi girls what's going on and i did a scene with them and then i just wanted to tease them because i thought i would maybe make them laugh and i go so you guys are rappers right and they go yeah and i go so did you ever kill anyone <laughs> and they so did not think that was funny um so <laughs> so uh so then so then um alice and chains came on and i love them i think they're so great so uh they came on and they are all um uh big junkies <laughs> is what they are and they're also well I, I guess I'm supposed to say I think they are whatever but anyway they are and so um but actually it's weird because the, the the whole band isn't junkies pretty much just the singer Lane and Lane came in and he had hot pink hair and it was in a Caesar like that which has got to see its day I have had it with that Caesar I don't care about Clooney and the whole gang it looks bad so anyway uh that Caesar's gotta go we are not in ancient Rome so um Anyway, we had a Caesar, and, and then he had like track marks and everything. You know, it was it was fascinating, but sad. So, uh, and the weird thing is. <laughs> And unfortunately, I didn't know he was really a junkie, and so I um, was like teasing him about it. <laughs> and I was going, hey, whatever you do, don't do any heroin and crack. And then he really was, and I was like, oops. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what's so weird about the, the rockers is they're still functional. So they go on, and the other guys in the band are clean, and it's so kind of sad because they sort of act like Lane's codependent girlfriend. So he's always screwed up, and they're always like, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And so he goes on and he finishes the song and he goes like this, again, yeah! And then you could have just tipped him like a cow. He was just like, you know, he just sort of staggered off like old Aunt Sophie. Um, so, uh, oh, okay, I have to, uh, so, all right, I will leave you this. These are, um, oh God, I hope you think this is funny. These are uh, the two funniest things a guy ever said to me in bed. All right, one of them was, uh, one of them was, I was, uh, this is the first time I slept with this one guy and he was really great and cute and everything and dreamy and nice. And uh, he was, uh, he was um, like, over me. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. But it was like, it was like pre-insertion. And um, he, he was over me and I was all happy because I love that feeling of looking up thing going like, oh, it's so, this is so much fun. And then he, um, right before we were going to, he was going to, you know, consummate or whatever, he goes like this, I'm really tiny. <laughs> That was such a great, hilarious thing to say. And then, because uh, you know, you don't know how to react. You're, you kind of, well, should I? Oh, uh, well, hey, no problem. Okay, whoa. Well, put it in. Let's see how she flies. You know, like I didn't. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, I'm gonna leave you with that. I just want to say something. Um, getting uh, this special was a real dream of mine, and you guys have been an awesome audience. So thank you so much, and good night.